So in my video Creepshow Art is Acting Sus, I promised that in a future video, I would take a look at the Twitter reactions and memes to this entire Creepshow Art situation. If you want to know what's going on, I recommend you watch that previous video. And yes, the situation is slightly more serious than the title implies. I was just in a silly mood that day and didn't know what to title the video, so I defaulted to referencing my favorite game Among Us. But regardless, let's start off with my favorite tweet on this entire situation coming from Libby, who tweeted out some art with the caption, So how about that Creepshow Art situation? Showing creep short splitting in two, one half saying, Guys, I love her so much. Please go subscribe to her. We're besties. And the other half saying, What a cow. A total leech. Disgusting. The reason I like this art so much is that I think it perfectly encapsulates this entire drama, as well as puts a unique spin on the two different colors of hair Creepshow has. Anyways, moving on, Loeybug says, I cannot and don't stand by Creepshow Art's alleged behavior that is coming to light. I'm so fucking devastated that someone I love so much could be capable of this. Emily Artful, I believe you. I stand by you. And I'm sorry for what you've been through. Mudahar says, Man, this Creepshow Art shit is insane. Allegedly stalking someone for over a decade? Posting on some lolka website shitting on her friends? This internet shit is insane and depressing. How do you fuck up your easy online career this hard, for fuck's sake? Adam says, the Creepshow Art situation gets more disgusting, disappointing, and disturbing every day. Flying Piece of Lettuce posts an image of Shannon shooting her own reputation, and then her saying, Why would Amy do this? Kriza says, Creepshow Art got me out here like, Our expectations were low, but holy fuck. Leah says, How I sleep knowing I was a Creepshow Art fan. Cordwit says, Here's my take on Creepshow Art. It's really sad to see a friend be 99% confirmed to be into some dodgy stuff. However, that doesn't mean I'm going to watch your 27 insufferable videos about every interaction you've ever had with her. Turkey Tom says, I never liked Creepshow Art's personality or videos, so I can now confirm that if someone makes bad videos, that means they are also a despicable person 100% of the time with no exceptions. Chris Reagan says, I don't understand this Creepshow Art stuff, so I'm gonna go to sleep until something I understand happens. SO6 says, Creepshow visiting lolcow, showing a picture of a bunch of clones interacting interacting with each other. Cupidity says, Me. I don't care about YouTube drama. Me finding out it's about Creepshow Art getting cancelled after years of horrible toxic behavior and abuse and harassment. Showing a picture of a bird with popcorn and binoculars. Backup Nunu says, Me watching Enemy Artful expose Creepshow Art and her piece of shit husband. Commentary Stats tweets out, Creepshow Art has lost 120k now. Once she loses a total of 126k, she'll have lost 25% of her sub count in two weeks, making this the biggest sub loss percentage wise for reference, James Charles' 2019 3 million loss was 18%, and ProJer's 254 loss was 24%. And at the time of recording this, she has dipped past that percentage, which is just insane. Anyways, moving on, Thought Crime says, Me trying to keep up with all the Creepshow Art drama, Gabby Hanna drama, and Trisha Paytas drama this week. Dude, that is the most relatable tweet I have ever read. Moon says, Me knowing I was a Creepshow Art fan. Cecil McFly says, One time I asked Creepshow Art for directions, and she punched me. Omnia says, Creepshow Art's career is 100% over. I gotta go. I gotta go. This is insane. Heart Spocky says, At people who are just now realizing that Creepshow Art is a piece of shit, even after they bullied a CSA victim over their cope art. Hi, welcome to reality. People who attack artists for creating immoral drawings are always monsters in real life. Every single time. They are projecting. They intentionally blur the lines between what's helpful, harmful, and neutral and hope that you'll look the other way when they do bad things. And so you're too busy targeting people who did nothing wrong to see what kind of awful things they are doing behind the scenes. Enbird says, I can't believe someone that I was so close to and worked for could be capable of all of these things. I am devastated and will no longer be working with her. I do not support or stand by any of Creepshow Art's alleged behavior, and I'm so sorry to anyone affected or involved. Speaking of people affected, one of Shannon's friends Ashley tweeted out, T channels yesterday. The silence is deafening. Hurry up, Creepshow friends. You were complicit if silent. Now that videos are finally coming out because we finally processed it. Sending love to Shannon's friends. Politely stop talking. Forever. The amount of snide comments and shitty influence to their audience to parrot their horrible takes has been ridiculous. Don't pretend you are here for anyone. Because you are all a bunch of pick me channels. No. This isn't about one person at all. If you get mad, it's probably because it's true. Or whatever y'all say. The amount of panic attacks I've had this last week from an influx of people I don't even know pressuring us and picking apart every little thing we say at the influence of these people is sickening. Don't pretend to care now. Just don't. Ashley also says, I think one of the worst part about everyone's videos coming out are the comment sections and tweets where people are now claiming it's taking away from Emily Artful's moment, when she herself has expressed that she disagrees and does not feel that way at all. Emily Artful quote tweets her and says, Yes, 
I want people to offer support to others who have been affected by Shannon's cruelty, not to tear them down. This is not just my story. It's not just about me. There are many casualties of Shannon's hateful, manipulative behavior, and they all deserve kindness and respect. Emily Artful also says, my hair most of 2016 was half orange, half black, but choppy and short. I had totally forgotten about this until my friend said something. It made me shiver. Unless the picture of Shannon is flipped, the colors were on the same side too. Emily also says, Please read this. This is a personal testimony from another very credible source that Shannon was the one doing the majority of the harassment. Thank you so much, Coltergeist, for coming forward. She then quote tweets this long thread from Kevin Coulter where they say, I never thought I'd find myself related to a situation like this, but I am absolutely in the business of holding people accountable for their actions. So I'd like to share what I know about the situation between Creep Shaward and Emily Artful. In the interest of preventing doxing, I'm not going to include any information that might put someone in danger, but if it becomes necessary, for either a court case or if things get wildly out of control, I can provide more specifics. I met Chen in my freshman year of college in 2011. We shared an English class and worked on a group project together. Outside of that, at the time, we didn't have much contact. I ended up leaving that school and attending a community college that was close to my hometown. At that school, I ended up meeting my abuser. She ended up completely separating me from my entire support group and I lost nearly all of my friends. There was a period of a few months where my abuser and I broke up, and this is when I reconnected with Shannon. Shannon ended up at the same community college, saw me on campus, and stopped me to say hi. I was desperate to make new friends, so this seemed like a blessing. She was fine at the beginning. We'd just hang out and share music, but she became concerning very quickly. It started her with introducing me to Anthony's music. She told me that he was her ex. They were still in a sexual relationship. The way he treated her seemed very unhealthy, and I told her as such. But Chen was insistent he was good for her. Eventually, she shared one of Anthony's music videos that featured Emily, and told me that Emily was also Anthony's ex. Chen told me that Emily was crazy, and Anthony only kept her around because she was a good singer, among other things. For the next while, every time Shannon and I would hang out, she would fixate entirely on Emily. She would point out all of what she perceived as Emily's flaws, would talk about how all of her tattoos were related to Anthony somehow, everything she could to put her down. I thought it was strange to fixate so much on an ex's ex, but I was desperate for anyone to help me out of the situation I was in, so I ignored a lot of the red flags. I haven't really been able to forgive myself for that, especially considering what came next. Shannon began to cyberstalk Emily, first starting by finding her YouTube page. She shared her videos with me, and I naively thought that was harmless, and it would go no further. But Shannon started looking for her home address, her phone number, or any other info she could find. Shannon told me how she had plans to harass Emily, either by sending her letters or prank calling her home, how she planned to leave hate messages on her videos, or DM her from burner accounts to spread hate. This is when I began to distance myself from Shannon. The distance led me back to my abuser, which is a different story. But one of my last interactions with Shannon was her proudly showing that Emily had posted a video about closing her YouTube channel because of the harassment she was receiving. Emily talked about how much it hurt to lose something that was important to her, but she was also anxious and in pain from the targeted harassment that she couldn't continue. It was at that point that I began to cut Shannon off. I felt guilty since that day, that I didn't do anything sooner, that I didn't go to the police with what I knew, or at least attempt to talk with Shannon to tell her what she was doing wasn't okay, but I was battling my own demons, and none of that seemed like an option. Over the years, I would occasionally receive cryptic messages from Shannon at weird hours of the night, usually just a single emoji or a strangely written greeting. This caused me to block her on most of my social media. Since then, I've deleted or rebranded my online presence to avoid my abuser, but about a year ago, Shannon found all my new accounts and added me with no contact. I used this as an opportunity to confront her for what she did. Screenshots of that in the next tweet. I made it a habit to screenshot my actions because my abuser had recently begun to spread incredibly harmful rumors about me. I don't have screenshots of her response because her account has been deleted, but I requested data from my Twitter today to see if I can get it. They then show the DM they sent to Shannon. It starts off with them saying, Hey there, it's been a while. I'm not sure how you found me, but it's nice to see a face from my past. Glad to see you have a pretty sizable following now and have found some sort of success. Hope you are doing okay other than that. Life is pretty wild nowadays. When we last talked, we engaged in some very concerning behavior. I was in a really dark place from Victoria, and you were basically my only friend, so I just ignored how bad everything was and that was very wrong of me. What began as what appeared at the time, a fun little thing to learn more about someone you had tangential connections with, quickly developed into cyber stalking, bullying, and harassment. What happened was not okay. 
and I should have said something sooner. I should have said something at the time, but I didn't. And that has really weighed on me over the years, so I guess I'm saying something now. We were younger and dumber, but we still should have known better. It seems like a lot of your content is focused on calling out people who have had similar behavior, and I hope that's a sign that you've changed for the better. I'd like to believe that you've changed quite a bit since we last spoke, and a whole lot has damaged me. I've made great efforts to cut off large portions of my life from when we were friends. I'm concerned. I'm very hesitant to let people into my life as it stands. I'm not accusing you of anything malicious, or that you have bad intentions. I've just got conspiracy theory brain now. Days. Victoria constantly stalked me for years after we officially broke up, and once she finally lost her last shred of contact with me, she started spreading extremely malicious lies about me, so she could have some sort of control. I lost a lot because of it, and I've learned not to trust things and not believe in coincidences. It might not be a true lesson, but it is the lesson I learned. I've deleted my Facebook. I'm fairly certain I have you blocked on Instagram, which was either something Victoria had me do, or I did in an effort to distance myself from my past slash get over the guilt. I'm not sure exactly what the reason is but it's fair to give you an explanation. I know I've rebranded my social media presence after we stopped talking, so I feel like to find me you'd have to be actively looking for me, or you've been keeping tabs on me ever since, and either situation sets off a whole lot of alarms in my head. Again, I'm not accusing you of doing anything malicious, I'm accusing me of paranoia, but I am still concerned. And double again, I really genuinely hope you were doing well. It just stresses me out a whole lot to have contact with anyone from that part of my life. I'm sorry. Kevin continues the thread by saying, Victoria, referenced in that screenshot, is my abuser. I use language that includes myself in the past actions, because I was afraid of her targeting me if she hadn't changed, and I just came out completely confronting her. Shannon's response was to brush off accountability, saying, we were just dumb kids. She also insisted that she found me naturally which didn't make sense as we had no similar circles, and I had an even smaller following back then. She immediately said she would block me so I didn't have to be concerned about her, which didn't seem like an action a guiltless person would take. I thought it was over. I didn't know how much she was doing to hurt other people, but it seems like she never really changed from when I knew her. My heart goes out to everyone she hurt, and everyone who thought they could trust her. This is such a terrible situation, and if anyone needs an ear, please feel free to reach out. If it becomes necessary, I can reopen my Facebook and try to download the data there, as I believe I have further evidence of Shannon behavior, but I hope this chapter can close and people can find some way to heal from the damage she's caused. So this was a very enlightening thread from Kevin. I'm really glad they posted this, because it adds a lot more credibility to what Emily has been saying about Shannon. Not to say that I didn't believe her, but I don't want to be responsible for accidentally spreading false information, and this thread gives me more confidence in what people are saying about Shannon's behavior actually being true, which is insane because I didn't expect her to be like this. But regardless, I would love to hear your thoughts on all of this in the comment section below, and if you want to keep up to date with Twitter drama, be sure to subscribe with notifications on. Thank you so much to my channel members for supporting the channel, in particular Scarby who has donated $100 a month. But with all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in another video.